Not many people throughout history have had a noun named in their honor. Fewer still have inspired both a noun and an adjective. One such man was Niccolo Machiavelli. To be Machiavellian is to act in a scrupulous, cunning, or underhanded manner. It's not the most flattering legacy, but there was far more to Niccolo Machiavelli than that. Niccolo Machiavelli was born in Florence, Italy, on May 3, 1469, the third child and first son of an aristocratic attorney named Bernardo di Niccolo Machiavelli. Family members held important positions in Florence. However, Bernardo was among the least wealthy of the family members. In fact, during Niccolo's youth, his father struggled with debt. Bernardo's interest in education, however, ensured that his son had access to a good education. Machiavelli was born at a turbulent time in Italian history. From Rome, the Pope had been warring against the Italian city-states. At the same time, the Holy Roman Empire, France and Spain contested these states, including Florence. Florence had become a key banking center under the influence of the Medici family, who, by the time of Machiavelli's birth, had become the effective rulers of the state. An intellectual movement known as the Renaissance, combining Christianity with an interest in classical culture and reasoning, was developing at the time. Machiavelli's education included grammar, rhetoric, and Latin. Even though he lived in a city where the study of ancient Greek was prominent, he seems not to have been instructed in that language. In 1494, the Medici family was expelled from Florence and a republic was established. When he was 29 years of age, Machiavelli was pressed into government service in the Florentine Republic during a time of social upheaval. He was made the chair of the Second Chancery and then the secretary of the Dieci di Libertas e di Pace. This was a ten-man council that had the job of establishing and maintaining diplomatic relations with other states. In his position as head of this body, Machiavelli embarked upon several international missions. In 1503, he was sent to Pistoia in the Tuscany region in an attempt to broker peace between opposing factions. When he was unable to get the two sides to come to a settlement, Machiavelli banished their leaders from the city. Over the next few years, he got a first-hand view of the brutal state-building methods employed by Italian Cardinal Cesar Borgia and his father, Pope Alexander VI. This, along with his observations of the corruption of the French church on occasional missions there, influenced his negative view of the church and influenced the writing of his most famous written work, The Prince. Around 1505, Machiavelli began to build the Florentine militia. Rather than recruiting foreign mercenaries who he considered to be unreliable, he relied on an armed citizenry. His militia consisted of 400 farmers who he armed with lances and small firearms. In 1509, Machiavelli's citizen army defeated an attack from the city-state of Pisa. Three years later, though, the Medicis, with the backing of Pope Julius II and the assistance of Spanish forces, successfully laid siege to Florence. This brought an end to the Florentine State Republic. Machiavelli was dismissed and banished from the city of his birth for 12 months. Then, the Medicis accused him of hatching a conspiracy to overthrow them. He was thrown in prison. Over a period of three weeks, he was tortured to extract his confession. However, he confessed his innocence and was subsequently set free. Following his release from prison, Machiavelli retired to his farm state at Sant'Andrea in Percasina. He then threw himself into his study and writings. His works on political theory went largely unnoticed during his lifetime, but his plays became popular. He still had political ambitions and was somewhat frustrated that he was unable to do so. The dedication to his first and most famous work, The Prince, completed in 1513, has a dedication to the Medicis. This has been interpreted by scholars 
as an attempt to curry favor with the ruling family in order to secure a political position. In the early 1520s, Machiavelli, by now an accomplished author and playwright, was given a commission by the Medicis, but not to political office. They tasked him with writing a history of Florentine, which was published in 1525. Medici Florence was defeated by the Holy Roman Empire in 1527, and the Florentine Republic was restored. There was no time, though, for Machiavelli to participate in this new government. He died a few weeks after the establishment of the Republic at the age of 58. Throughout his life, Machiavelli wrote more than a dozen political and historical works, starting in 1499. He also penned fictional works, including plays, poems, and a novel. His most famous work was The Prince, a political treatise which he wrote in 1532, but which was not published until five years after his death. This book has been variously interpreted as a simple uncovering of the deceptive and cruel methods used by rulers to maintain their power and as a guidebook of evil. It is from this book that the word Machiavellian entered the English language. The prince deals with the methods by which a new prince, i.e. one who has not inherited his position, retains his position of power. In the first two chapters, he makes it clear that the setting for the work is autocratic regimes, such as that of the Medicis, rather than republican ones. He then goes on to introduce the themes of power politics, witchcraft, and the gaining of popular goodwill. He gives advice on the pros and cons of various means to acquiring power, how to cut down internal insurrection, and how to establish a strong army. In later chapters of The Prince, Machiavelli describes the personal qualities needed by successful princes. His underlying premise here is that lofty ideals make for bad policy. Virtue may be admirable for its own sake, but when used as the basis of political decision-making, he asserted it would be disastrous. In contrast, such traits as deceit, dishonesty, and capriciousness while frowned upon in the individual, were, in his view, absolutely essential to the efficient running of the state. Overriding these personal traits of the ruler was the vital need to maintain the goodwill of the people. So even though it was necessary to use deceptive and underhanded means to maintain rulership, it was equally important to portray an image of virtue. Four years after the completion of the prince, Machiavelli wrote his discourses on the first ten books of Titus Livy, usually simplified to the discourses. This work contrasts sharply with the prince, essentially being a discussion of the way that a republic should be established. Machiavelli explains the advantages of the republic. However, he asserts that to maintain a republic, it must be returned to a kingly state. This work which was also published posthumously, went on to become a central text of modern republicanism. Machiavelli's writings had a profound influence on Western political thought. The prince is known to have been an influence on both Thomas Cromwell and Henry VIII, and that king's turn towards Protestantism. Catholic writers associated Machiavelli with Protestantism, while Protestants saw him as being a Catholic advocate. In the following centuries, his writings would influence such major philosophers as Montaigne, Descartes, Hobbes, Locke, and Montesquieu. Machiavelli's championing of republicanism in the discourses is also thought to have been a direct influence on America's founding fathers. Among them, John Adams was most influenced by Machiavelli, who wrote that the world was much indebted to Machiavelli for the revival of reasons in matters of government.